Good morning. Hey, good morning. Nice to have you with us. Amen. Good morning, everyone. I love it when you come on and you all say good morning to us. And, uh, of course, we say good morning back. Um, we not, may not um, be able to be in the same room, but we are by media. And so it's always great to have you on. I think Laurie Whipler is the first one on this morning. And Georgette. <laughs> and Georgette. Okay, come Christine on on. Charles, Christine yeah. Charles. Come on on, everybody, and we'll get into the word and prayer again this morning. You know what was so sweet? You know, when I turned on uh, Facebook Live this morning, here, all of those who are online were all lined up in a row with their faces <laughs> or their uh, profile pictures <laughs> yeah, uh, lined up there just waiting yeah. for the Word of God. Yeah. And that so reminds me how that little birds sit with their mouth open, waiting for Mama Bird to come and drop a little worm in their mouth. Amen. And uh, I know you're not going to get a little worm this morning, but you are going to get, get a some. Bit of, bit of steak. <laughs> you will get some meat, though, and it'll be meat in God's Word. Amen. Yeah. And I see Pastor Brad on there this morning. Lord. See Pastor Lauren. Yeah, I see Lord. so many of you on there, and we thank yeah. you all for joining yeah. us. Uh, I see Doug uh, Stevens on there. Hi, Doug. That's our Good media you, guy. Doug. Everybody, um, come on down, and we're going to get stuck uh, into Morris, the Word. Uh, Pastor Morris. Oh, Morris. Hey, Welcome Morris. back, Morris. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, Pastor. <clears throat> <clears throat> so this morning, I do want to share a very important scripture with you before we actually get into uh, point number four on our um, points as to how to pray successful prayers. Yeah, Amen. Strategies. Uh, strategies. Yeah. Prayer yeah. strategies, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, but I want to read this to you in light of of what we shared yesterday. Yesterday, we had two amazing prophetic words that we shared with you, uh, one from Pastor Lorne Davis from uh, Swift Current uh, in Saskatchewan, Canada, and also one from Pastor Paul McCullough in, in Barrie, Barrie Ontario. Uh, Ontario, Canada. But both of them were extremely mm-hmm. powerful, and if you remember, we shared them with you, and they're on our Facebook page, just so you know, and you can download them from there. Amen. But I do want to read a scripture from 1 Timothy, and this is chapter 1 this morning, and it's verse 18. And it says this, if you have your Bibles, of course, you want to underline it. It says, this charge I commit to you, son Timothy, this is Paul speaking to Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them, the prophecies, you might wage a good warfare. And this morning's point is warfare prayer. And so I did want to share this with you because uh, many of us have received prophetic words over the years and will uh, receive other prophetic words. And we want to know how to use these prophetic words as a warfare weapon. So this is a weapon when you take those prophetic words and you wage warfare with them. For example... Uh, this prophetic word we received mm, yesterday yeah. says 2019 is a year of restoration and, and revival. revival. Yeah. And so what we have to do with that, we have to proclaim that. We have to pray that into existence. Yeah, don't Amen? speak opposite to it. Don't speak in opposition mm. to it. And no, don't, matter, no matter what it looks like. <clears throat> don't let the circumstances sway you. You yeah. stick to that. This is the year of restoration and revival. And the prophetic word that God has given to us uh, for this year is a new day, a new day, a fresh anointing. and a fresh anointing. From and Isaiah we, 43, 19. Okay. Mm. And we stick to that, we don't do. we, George? Yeah, absolutely. And we do warfare with that yeah. by praying it, by confessing it. And the other prophetic word yesterday, so many uh, different things and likening it, uh, David being likened unto um, the Victory Churches, right? And the seasons that David went through. And it was incredibly powerful. And so we take those and we use them as weapons to do warfare with. Uh, The first uh, season uh, was David was first anointed when he was very young to be king. This anointing was futuristic in nature, Mm. right? Futuristic in something nature. Something that would happen. Something that would happen. And certainly we saw that in the first uh, 20 years of victory. And uh, then the second one was uh, David's second anointing was priestly. 
And that's, uh, he had to learn to praise God under pressure. Yep. Oh, man, it's so <clears throat> true, isn't it, George? Regardless of the circumstances. Yes, and <laughs> we have done that recently yeah. in the last, what, 20 yeah, years? We have, There's yeah. been a lot of pressure yeah. and a lot yeah. of opposition that's come. Yeah. But we can use that as warfare. He, we walked in that priestly anointing. We didn't give up. <clears throat> we didn't quit. And we didn't pull back. And then number three, of course, David in his third season of life became king over Israel. And it talks about the third anointing received was the anointing of breakthrough. breakthrough. And so that's exactly yeah. what we want to do. We want yeah. to see yeah. this year yeah. as being the year of breakthrough. Well, that first one was an anointing of promise. But then eventually the promise became a reality. Yes. Now he's not just promised to be king. <clears throat> then he became king, king over two tribes and then king over 12 tribes as he grew in his abilities, God-given abilities. Amen. And so we have to grow. We have to continue to grow. And um, and God's not going to, he wants to grow us all to the size of the vision. That's what he wants to do. He's not going to give us more than what we can handle. <clears throat> he's going to stretch us, but he's not going to overstretch us. It's going to be a little bit at a time. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And um, what we should do is read number four, warfare prayer. Yeah. And it says in Second Corinthians <clears throat> 10, verse 4 and 5, it says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, they're not natural, uh, but they are mighty uh, in God for the pulling down of strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every, every thought, thought into captivity to the obedience yes. of Christ. Christ well. And this is mm. warfare prayer. So yeah. we did share with you just now that you can use the prophetic words that have mm. gone before you if you copy them out so you have them in your hand. You can do warfare with them by praying them and prophesying them, confessing them with your mouth. Amen? Yeah, that's right, yeah. So, Pastor George, weapons. Yeah. What kind of weapons do you see we have? The ones that the devil really <laughs> opposes us and we can counteract. You can see that the weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal. So, you know, firstly, we have superior weapons to the enemy. We've got <clears throat> weapons that are not carnal. Right. We've got something more powerful than that. And then not only that, but we have superior strategies. The weapons that we have, I think number one is the word of God. You know, we see how Jesus used the word in Luke chapter 4. Mm -hmm. It is written. Every time he was tempted by the devil, mm -hmm. it is written with uh, with the correct scripture, the opposing scripture, the opposite scripture. And so he knew what the word says. We've got to know what the word says so we can use the word when discouragement tries to come, when deception tries to come. We need to know the word so that we can speak it in the face of that opposition, in the face of that temptation, in the face of that potential mm -hmm. offense. We speak it. You know, and then, of course, you know, the... Um, there's the uh, name of Jesus, mm. which is a big one. This is a big one, the Powerful. name of Jesus. He says, I give you in my name, I give you all authority over all the power of the enemy so that nothing shall by any means hurt you. In my name, you'll cast out devils. In my name, you'll speak in tongues. In my name, you'll lay hands on the sick and you shall recover. Mm -hmm. I love what happened there in Acts chapter 3 and verse 6 with the uh, with the uh, cripple being healed. Yes. You know, when he looked at uh, Peter and John, John, Peter and John, looked at them they said he was expecting to receive something expecting to receive money he said silver and gum i don't have any money but such as i have i give to you we don't have money but we've got something much more valuable and much more powerful than money what we got and then he said in the name of jesus christ of nazareth rise up and walk and immediately he was healed you know what did they have they knew what they had and they knew how to use it what did they have and the same thing we've got if we're born again number one they had the power of the holy ghost mm -hmm. in from acts chapter one and verse eight just got it you'll receive power mm -hmm. after the holy spirit has come upon you yes. and then secondly they had the name of jesus which gave them the authority to use that power you know, that seems what jesus would do so they had the power of the holy ghost and the authority oh, to right. use that power to bring healing and deliverance and to bring all kinds of incredible miracles to pass so you know there's the top three things i think you know you yeah. got the word of god you got the name of jesus you got the power of the holy ghost and apart from that you got ministering angels you know we've got our the gifts of the holy spirit mm -hmm. the ability to speak in tongues and and there's a whole variety of other gifts and powers that we have on our side and the enemy comes in <clears throat> with all kinds of discouragements doesn't oh, yeah. he George? absolutely yeah what are some of the things that you see as the most discouraging things or uh the things that satan uses against us 
Well, I think it's negative speaking. I think when everybody starts speaking negative mm-hmm. about something that's really been good, you know, speaking negative mm-hmm. about it <laughs> and uh, not seeing the good and the potential. I think, you know, it's, it's when the problem comes, all people do is look at the problem. They don't look at the opportunity in that problem. Mm-hmm. I came up with a word a couple of years ago called Christ opportunity. In every crisis, there's an opportunity. We've got to have the eyes that look for the opportunity. And I think a lot of the things that discourage us, I mean, even like with Nehemiah, when he went down to rebuild the wall, right. the people were all demotivated, they were yeah. all discouraged because they all had their eyes on the rubbish. <laughs> yeah. And speaking about the rubbish, they were all speaking about the rubbish, got their eyes on the rubbish. And then Nehemiah said, look, you know, let's, let's rise, rise up. up. Let's rise up and fight. You know, get your eyes off of that. Hit, we, let's get our eyes back onto the God that's more than enough, more than power, all powerful, all knowing and, and wants to release us into a life of victory. So that's a word for us today. It is. That this year we're not going to get our eyes on the rubbish. Yes, there's rubbish. Rubbish We all know that. There's rubbish everywhere. But we have a great and a mighty God. We have superior weapons, Mm -hmm. and we're going to do warfare against those things that come against us this year. We're not going to lay down and roll over and play dead. We're going to rise up, and we're going to take authority in the name of Jesus. Amen? That's right. And some of the things I'm thinking about, discouragement is something that comes and tries to attack you and I and we need to fight against discouragement and David said why art thou cast down on my soul hope thou in God amen we have to remember these things this year so we keep our joy and I think you know you you know people can discourage you circumstances can discourage you but the worst kind (laughs) is when we discourage ourselves, and that's when we begin to speak the wrong things things opposite to what God said when God says you can go in and do it and then we're talking about how we can't do it you know that's where, that got them into problems in the wilderness there and uh, and it can get us into problems too what we got to do is when God says it then we need to believe it and we need to speak it yeah and deception <clears throat> is another thing that oh, yeah. Satan uses oh, yeah. against the Christian and that was he the uses first it one. <laughs> against everybody but he does use it against the Christian doesn't he George well he used it against deception. Adam and Eve you know, they were, they would, Eve was deceived anyway. And then Adam, you know, he willingly fell, but Eve was deceived. That was the beginning. Mm-hmm. And, and then from there, Jesus warned us. He says, beware that you're not deceived. Don't let people deceive you because there's going to be many false Christs, many false prophets, people saying an awful lot of things that are wrong and very deceptive. And we need to know the truth. So the truth can set us free and we can walk in that freedom and liberty. Another thing we need to do this year is to pray against the veils that the enemy has placed on the eyes of those people that you're praying for uh, to be saved. And I want to read this scripture from uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And in verse 3 and 4, it says, But even if our gospel is veiled or hidden, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age, with a small g, has blinded, who by not believing, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine under them. Mm, So it's saying that some of the reasons why some of the people you're praying for aren't saved yet is because there are blindfolds on their eyes or they're being veiled. And it says who veiled them? The devil. Well, let's remember that we have all power. We have all authority. We have all power and authority over the evil one. In fact, isn't that what it says in Luke in uh, Luke Luke chapter 10? And in verse, uh, what verse is that? Uh, It says in verse 18, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, and this is Jesus speaking. When Jesus is speaking, my ears go up. Amen. He says, uh, uh, behold, I give unto you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions. And that is symbolic of demonic forces, disease, sickness, infirmity, veils over uh, uh, people's eyes. And it says, I've given you all apparent authority over uh, the evil one, over the powers powers of of the the enemy. enemy. All, not just some, but all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means harm you. Mm. So we have to remember that. Yeah, powerful. What do you think of that, George, when we see people that we're witnessing to, that we're sharing with, and they kind of go blank. They kind of don't understand what we're saying. It's because they're veiled. Okay, so this morning, remember, this is warfare. And we can do warfare against those veils that's going to bind those veils and cast them off of people's eyes 
so that the glorious gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ yeah. can shine unto them. Yeah, and we need to believe that, uh, you know, God's going to, God, the anointing of God's going to break some things over their life. And we can too, we can bind those powers in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Every spirit that would blind their eyes, we break it right now in Jesus' wonderful name. Yes. Every bl every spirit yes. that would uh, cause them Heal, to poor, be yeah. led into deception, we break the power of that right yes. now. And we rebuke de deception and the powers of darkness over mm -hmm. our loved ones right now in Jesus' Jesus, mm -hmm. wonderful and powerful name. Mm -hmm. And Lord, send people into their path to share mm -hmm. the word of God with them. And Father, when they do, let their eyes be opened supernaturally. We open the eyes, Father, of, the, of those that we love. I pray, Father, that they would see what they haven't seen before. Mm -hmm. And I thank you for that in Jesus' wonderful name. Yes, Father, we mm -hmm. do uplift mm -hmm. everyone on our hit list, yeah. Father God. Mm -hmm. Everyone that we're praying for for salvation. Mm -hmm. Everyone on our hit list this morning. We oh, place our hands on our hit list this morning and we absolutely bring these people before your throne and we place them on your yes. altar this morning you, father Jesus. god for their Thank salvation you, mm. and father we do bind the enemy we cast down every veil we cast down everything that is blinding their mind and blinding their eyes from seeing your glory father what we bring those things down right now in the name of jesus and father for everyone that we know that's deceived father god everyone that's in that place of deception we break the power of that deceptive spirit now in jesus name and we say that you will have no power you'll have no authority you'll have no place in this in jesus name and father we thank you for the glorious gospel of the lord jesus christ shining forth into the hearts and the lives of those people we're praying for today in jesus mighty name let the light shine thank you lord jesus Thank you. Let for the it, light Lord. shine. Thank you, Father. And thank you, Lord, Praise Father, you, Lord. that 2019 is a year of restoration and revival. Father, according to the prophetic word, and we believe it, Lord, mm -hmm. 2019, a year yes. of restoration. You're restoring the backsliders. You're bringing them back. You're bringing them to their right mind, and you're bringing healing and deliverance and bringing them back in Jesus' wonderful name mm -hmm. and revival. And Lord, we know, Father, mm -hmm. revival, it's things Jesus. come back to life. Yes. Well, the, the love comes back for, for the word, the yes. love for the church comes back yes. the love for the gifts comes back the love for the lost and the hurting and the broken comes back father i thank you lord for reviving us again in jesus wonderful name and lord we know the fruit of revival is evangelism and soul saved <laughs> healing and deliverance and freedom coming in the wonderful name of jesus lord you're building your church today yes. you said i will build my church, church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against yes. it and lord i thank you for your word this is a guarantee of the success that you've given us and the success we can have in building great churches for the kingdom of God. Father, in Jesus' wonderful and powerful and mighty name, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, that every every local church shine like a, a powerful lighthouse, I pray, in every dark community, in Jesus' name wonderful and powerful and mighty name and father we mm. pray for our pastors and we pray for our churches father god we pray for the mm -hmm. leaders father god we pray for the congregations father god we uplift the local church father god i thank you that you are jesus you are building your church today and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it and every weapon that's formed against the local church every weapon that's formed against the church is broken it's bound it's cast down it's placed under the feet of the church today in the mighty name of jesus father god we thank you for the blood the blood of jesus and i thank you lord that satan trembles when he sees or hears about the blood i thank you for the blood of jesus covering our pastors and our leaders and our churches today i thank you for the blood that covers them in mm. Jesus' name and protects Jesus them name. from all of the wiles of the devil in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Yeah. And, you, Father, Lord. for the people, mm. uh, Father God, who are bound and those, Father God, uh, that are deceived, Father God, that are backslidden, Father God, that are no longer in the church today. They're no longer attending a church. They've been discouraged. They've been, uh, you know, deceived. Uh, deceived, Father God. Mm. I break the power over their lives and I say that, that the body of 
of Christ shall rise up. Like it says in Ezekiel, they shall be a, a mighty army, mm -hmm. bone to bone. They shall rise up and they shall be powerful in this hour Amen. in Jesus' Amen. mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. You know, on the prophecy that Pastor Lorne uh, gave us, it says it will be dangerous and fruitless to be isolated and, and independent. We must connect bone to bone as in Ezekiel 37. <clears throat> we all need to come back and be connected, not just loosely connected. There needs to be a strong connection in the local church. It's one of those strongholds. Return to the stronghold, you prisoners of hope. I tell you, the local church can be a wonderful stronghold. Mm -hmm. You know, the covenant relationship we have with God is a stronghold. Our relationship with the word of God is a stronghold, mm -hmm. but the local church also can be a wonderful, powerful stronghold against the attacks of the enemy for each and every one of us. And so, Father, we say thank you for that yes, in the wonderful name do. of Jesus. Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We will return to the stronghold of a hope. And Lord, you declared in that passage that you would restore double to us. Father, and I thank you, Lord, for that double being restored as well. I thank you, Lord, double strength, double, double healing, double, 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 double anointing, Father, in Jesus' wonderful name. I thank you for double, double, double all the way through. Mm -hmm. I thank you, Lord, you'll increase the word in our yes, life. Thank you'll you, increase Lord. our prayer life. You'll yes. increase, Father, the, the fruit of our prayers and the fruit of our uh, the word that's gone forth. And we say thank you for that right now in Jesus' wonderful name. And I just have a word of knowledge mm -hmm. that there are some people with mm -hmm. us today yeah. who are feeling weak physically weak. Right. They want to get up and run. Yeah. They want to get up and move forward with God, but they're feeling a weakness in their body, a weakness, mm. tiredness, you know, and I just want to pray for you. If that's mm. you this morning and you're feeling tired, you're feeling, uh, you know, just heavy and you're not, you want to run, your mind wants to run, your spirit wants to run, yeah. but you're <clears throat> uh, kind of handicapped in that area. I'm going to pray for you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bind every uh, wicked, foul thing, Father God, that would come against any of the mighty warriors in the body of Christ. Every wicked, foul thing that would come against them and cause them to feel weak, cause them to feel sickly. In fact, I bind every sickness, I bind every disease in the name of Jesus, and I say that you have no place in the body of Christ. You have no place in the bodies and the minds and the the souls of the Christian in Jesus name. We are bought with a price. We are bought with a price and we belong to Jesus and we thank you Lord that in you there is no sickness. There is no disease. There is no weakness. There is no infirmity in Jesus mighty name and we confess. Let the weak say I am strong and this morning we say I am strong in Jesus mighty name. I am not weak. I am strong in Jesus name. In Jesus mighty name. Weak say I am strong. Uh, thank you for Absolutely. that, Father. Absolutely. Thank you, Lord In Jesus. Jesus mighty thank you, name. Lord Jesus. You know, Hazel, uh, the um, you know where uh, this passage here, uh, where the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty in God, for the pulling down of strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Mm -hmm. You know, pulling down strongholds, pulling down the strongholds of the enemy. Sometimes the strongholds that we can have built up in our mind against even certain truths. You know, where certain truths offend us. You know, and if you're not careful, that truth, that truth becoming an offense, can cause you to end up being blinded not only in one area but in a number of areas and so we need to pull down strongholds you know and then make make the enemy strongholds let's turn them around so they become our strongholds in yeah. a mighty way like David when he took Jerusalem mm -hmm. that was a stronghold against Israel ever getting in there but once they broke that then they made the stronghold of the enemy the city of God you know, and mm. that, that's powerful. We need to go in our communities that are strongholds for the devil. Turn around, let's make it a stronghold for the kingdom of God. Yeah, we're pulling Amen. down strongholds. Str yeah, oh yeah. We're pulling down strongholds and a lot of those strongholds are in <clears throat> minds. They're in our mind. They are. And so we need to pull those things First. down and we need to believe God's word above everything else. So that's let's right. do warfare. Let's understand and know that we have authority and power over all the power of the enemy and nothing, nothing shall ever hurt us. Nothing shall by any means, Jesus said, shall by any means hurt us. Amen. So we have that power yeah, yeah. and we have the name of Jesus. We have <laughs> the word of God, which is the sword of the spirit. Man, yeah. we are loaded yeah. and we are a mighty <laughs> army. But remember oh, yeah. that the army of God knows how yeah. to keep rank, keep yeah. rank. Yeah. Keep rank. It means stay in unity, yeah. stay in your place, and then fight yeah. from that place of victory mm -hmm. in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Well, we you have know, 
Just time. Go ahead. I just, just remember the name of Jesus. I don't know if you remember it, but that young lady when we were still in Leftbridge, a young lady in Leftbridge there. And, um, and she'd lost her voice for about three months to the place where she couldn't work. And, uh, and she uh, went to the doctors. The doctors did something. And her voice came back for a little while, but left a couple of days later. Anyway, she came to our prayer meeting in our house. It's before we'd even started the church. Yeah. She came to the prayer meeting in our house and we're just praying and praying and praying. And then we said, well, Paul, why don't we pray for this girl here? Her voice is gone. Let's pray for her to get it back. And we prayed. And we prayed again and nothing happened initially. And then we got up, we prayed again and she did get her voice back and then she lost it. And then we prayed again. We all sat down and we prayed again and she got it back. And then we all rejoiced and then, and then she lost it. And then, then, uh, you know, eventually what happened, we, we prayed again and uh, in the name of Jesus and she got it back. And then eventually what happened, even as soon as we mentioned the name of Jesus, she got it back. And so, you know, and it, but she kept losing it. And then we said, well, look, you know, what you need to do is begin to thank Jesus. As soon as you get it back this next time, you begin thank to Jesus. thank Jesus with all of your heart, mind, soul, strength. And she got it back the next time and she started thanking God and praising God and glorifying God. And then she got baptized in the Holy Ghost and started speaking in other tongues. And by this time, it's two o'clock in the morning. And then she went back, woke her mother up and, uh, and brought her mother. And then the, her and her mother were up all night praying and then of course as soon as church was open they were there remember that yes it was an all-night prayer me, meeting what a powerful demonstration of the name of jesus yes you just mention the name and they and she got a voice back well there's power in with that authority name. oh there is when you just say in jesus in name, jesus name that's all it takes yeah. amen oh, and, yeah. amen well quickly we're going to do the next point very quickly mm. uh point number five on our list here uh, is praying the prayer of agreement. And in Matthew chapter 18, verse 19 and 20, it says, Again, I say unto you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am here in the midst of them. Well, Amen. Yeah. And it does mention on our notes here, oh, yeah. Psalm 119, God's word is forever settled. Yeah. It stands forever and yeah. i think a good thing to say there would be uh to have a partner who prays yeah. with you i know george yeah. and i pray together all the time, all the yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. and right now we're all praying together online that's very good churches have corporate prayer meetings very good in your small groups and you're all agreeing together remember what it says again i say unto you that two of you agreeing on earth concerning Anything you ask, that is according to God's will. Amen. Of agreement, it yeah. will be done for you. Wow. Wow. It's powerful, yeah. We we must agree with the word too, not just with one another, but we need to be agreeing on the word. That's why the word is powerful. This is what the word says about this situation. Can we agree on this? Yes. And then the, then there's power in that prayer, praying God's word together. Yeah, and we can agree we can. on the word of God. Amen. Yeah. So this morning has been uh, powerful again. And uh, we've learned some very important things about warfare. Don't forget, you have yeah. got power and authority over the enemy. In fact, in Mark chapter 16, verse 16 and 17, it says, we will cast out devils. So you have the power to cast out devils. Oh, so if there's a devil hanging around your place, there's a <laughs> devil hanging around your friends or anyone on your hit list, then you cast that devil away in the name of Jesus. Bring down those strongholds. Bring down those blindfolds, and we're going to see salvation come this yeah. year. Don't forget, yeah. 2019 yeah, that's right. is it's the, the year of restoration, restoration and, and revival. revival. Restoration Amen. and revival. Wow. Restoring. I tell you, it's when somebody's taken everything away from you, and, and it's getting restored. Yeah. I like that scripture in Zechariah 9 and verse 11. Return to the covenant. To return to the... Stronghold. You prisoners of return to the stronghold, mm -hmm. you prisoners of hope. And I declare I will re give you double. I'll return double to you. Amen. That is powerful. I'm believing for the double. I'm believing for restoration. I'm believing there's going to be double. It, it comes with that double that increase in church attendance, mm -hmm. increase in the souls we win for Christ, increase in the amount of leaders that are going to be raised up, mm -hmm. increase in our finances, increase in every area that we have that's vital to the expansion of the kingdom of God. And, and our so, Lord, churches are growing and our year. churches are growing this year and yeah. new churches are going to be planted and our pastors <laughs> are going to be happier and preach with more joy amen now we should just pray because for 
Because they're being prayed for. We should pray for our churches in Nairobi, you know, with the terrorist attack. Yes. We, we, we got word. For, we're doing the conference in Nairobi. In February. We're, in February. So we're, we're going over there and bringing in all of our yeah. African pastors in. And, and, you know, there's been a major terrorist attack over there just recently. As Attacked you Attacked one of the hotels. One of the hotels. And killed about 14, 14 people. 14 people were killed in it. And, and um, But that doesn't stop us from going. No, it doesn't. We're and, going of course, to do our before. conference. Yeah, we're going to do our conference. But... We need to pray for those, our churches. We have churches in okay. Nairobi. Yes. And so, Father, we pray for yeah. Pastor Innocent and Jane. We, yes. we pray for Pastor Julian and his wife. Elizabeth, we pray, pray thank for, you, Lord. And we pray for, uh, for um, uh, the, all, of, all of our churches in that area. And we say thank you for each and every one of them right now. And I pray a hedge of protection around them in the wonderful name of Jesus. Keep them strong. Keep them safe. And, Father, I pray to you, Lord, that you, Father, would even cause great increase in their churches and increase, Father, in that city into to the churches, even as a result of what has happened, mm -hmm. what the devil meant for evil, I pray, dear Lord, you turn it around mm -hmm. and bring it so it causes good to happen in Jesus' wonderful name. Mm -hmm. Let people realize how short life is, and may they return to you, Father, because you are the life giver. And I say yeah. thank you for that thank in you Jesus' for that, name, Father God. We yeah. give you praise Harvest for of it. Souls. We give you praise for it, Lord, yeah. in Jesus' mighty name. Yeah. Amen. So thank you so much for being with us this morning, and don't forget to join us tomorrow. Tomorrow will be our last um, meeting together online, although I must say I've had so many uh, requests for us to come online again even after the fast. Yeah. And so we're definitely going to be doing something yeah. maybe once a month or yeah. something, but we have to keep the prayer up this year. <laughs> And so we're going to do everything yeah. we can to help to keep the prayer up yeah. uh, in, in all of our nations. And we have many nations online right now that are praying as See, well. See, Will Graham is with us there too. Yes, Will Pastor Will and Bobby. Yeah. And we want to uh, make sure that this prayer continues. We're not yeah. going to ease up when the Daniel fast is over. That's We're just getting started. Amen? <laughs> just getting started. So God bless you. And we will see you tomorrow morning. Don't miss out okay. on the last one. Don't sleep in. Yeah. All right. Okay. God bless you. God bless. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.